Hi guys and welcome to the Everyday in Brussels YouTube channel. My name is Chelsea and I am going to be making banana bread today. Um, it's just for snacking and my son starts school tomorrow so I wanted to make him a little treat. I usually spread, um, typically I would spread like peanut butter or almond butter on it, but um, his school is not nut free but they encourage you to bring less nuts I guess if possible. So I'm going to do some sun butter on the top and pack it in his lunch for him tomorrow and then we can snack on it. Um, probably for the next few days. It doesn't actually last um, very long in this family. So I wanna start off by mashing. You can do three or four bananas. Mine are super spotty, but they're still not the ripest um, of bananas for this. So I am doing four bananas just to make it a little sweeter. So I just use a fork and mash them up with this end of, or the tines of the fork. I've already mashed up three of them. So I just have this fourth one to go. Um, I am just trying to figure out what to pack him. I've been packing his lunch for about a year, but I want to make sure he has some things that he likes. They do encourage them not to share their lunch, which is great being a vegan, um, just to make sure he's not getting anything else. Um, if he does, obviously, it is what it is. So the next ingredient is a third of a cup of melted butter. I only I used the Miyoko's butter, and I only had about a sixth of a cup, so I just added applesauce for the rest of the third and that should just be fine it's just a little less fat in there um and then three-fourths cup of sugar i used coconut sugar today it's just something i prefer to use for our family one egg and of course we don't have an egg so i use the flax egg it's just one tablespoon of flax ground flaxseed and three tablespoons of water one teaspoon of vanilla and one teaspoon of baking soda. I'm going to do the baking soda first so I can use the same spoon and not have everything stick to it. Mm, one teaspoon of baking soda and then one teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla is so expensive. It's crazy. I mean, I understand why, but it's definitely an expensive ingredient. And then a pinch of salt. I have like the smallest amount of salt in our shaker or our grinder, so I'm just going to use what I have in there and hope it's a pinch, whatever that means. Um, and then one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You could use gluten-free flour. I would recommend doing a one-to-one -one ratio of flour. Bob's Red Mill has a great one that I love using. If you are gluten-free, it might take a little more baking time, but you could use that also. Um, and I'm just using a organic flour that we typically use. I actually buy it in bulk and keep it in our basement and bring it up as I need it and refill our canister. You hear that noise? It's just our washer. And then go ahead and stir it up. So it's a really easy recipe. Like I said, you could swap out some of the ingredients. You can add, oh, you know, actually I am going to add some chocolate chips to this just to make it a little bit more special for my little dude's first day back at school. So you just mix it up. I use a wooden spoon. You can also use like a KitchenAid mixer if you want to. I just try to keep it simple. I didn't want to lug out that whole thing. So go ahead and stir it up. And then I'm going to sprinkle about a quarter of a cup, oh, a quarter of a cup of chocolate chips in there, maybe a little less. Um, we'll see. I think I'm going to do mini chips and standard size chips. So. Go ahead and mix it up and add in whatever you want. You could also add in other fruits at this time. You could add in apples, nuts. Um, I'm not going to add any nuts just because of the nut allergy situation at school, but I do love walnuts in mine. So this would be the perfect time to add any of that in. Blueberries if you wanted to. Lemon. Um, anything would be great. And don't add lemon juice, just the zest to add it if you wanted to add like lemon banana bread. Whatever you want. So anyways, this is what it looks like all mixed up. Just a dark batter. You can also do this in muffin cups. Also, I just lined a tin with some parchment paper and I did spray it a little bit with coconut oil. I'm going to go ahead and add the chocolate chips in and then I'll show you how I pour in the loaf pan. Let's see what size this is. Um, this is a 5.8 or 8.5 inch loaf pan. Different types of chips. I'm going to add mini ones and just standard size baking chips. These are the Enjoy Life brand. I also buy these in bulk um, and I keep them again in our basement pantry, but you can use whatever chips you like, especially if you are vegan. Um, it's important to get like the dairy free chips and the Enjoy Life brand is, I believe the whole brand is dairy free because it's all about like 
different allergies and whatnot. So, but I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. So, all right. It's all mixed together. And I think that that took me, I have to say, maybe five minutes, but it could be a little less because this is super quick. Fruit breads are always super fast to whip together, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour all the batter in to my baking dish. And then I'm going to bake it at 350 for about an hour. I do turn it every 15 minutes. I just set a little alarm and every 15 minutes I turn the pan. And then to check it, I just do the like toothpick method where you stick a toothpick in it and make sure that it's not runny. Um, you might see it's getting a little darker if that happens. Um, I just put a sheet pan over it or a piece of foil kind of tented on the top to make sure that there's no, it's not getting too, too brown, but it should be fine in there. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the oven and I will show you guys what it looks like when it is all finished. So I just wanna give you guys a few tips about the fruit bread that I just made. This one's banana. I do not um, put in like wet or dry first. I don't feel like it matters in this spread. If you do, I would recommend just mixing all the dry ingredients and then adding in the wet ingredients as you go. But again, I don't think it has made a difference in the tons of times that I've made this recipe. Um, also, if you want to cook it at this, a little bit lower than the center rack, that's always important for that top to not get as brown. As I mentioned before, unless you're going to tent it with foil. Also, when you are done baking, it's really important as soon as you can to get that bread out of the oven. If you've noticed, some breads have like a gooier portion on the bottom. That's because they let it sit in the pan for too long. So it's really important that you remove the bread from the pan and let it rest on a rack as soon as you can kind of handle it. I wouldn't let it go more than five or so minutes. I use um, just like an icing spatula to kind of get around the sides and then just flip it over with some um, pot holder, oven mitts, a towel, whatever you use. So those are just some tips that I have. Also, when I said I turn it every 15 minutes, I turn it a quarter of a turn every 15 minutes, so then it is, my son just came and closed the door. I feel like he's a little tired of listening to me talk about this. Anyways, so I turn it a quarter of a turn every 15 minutes just to get it even in the oven. My ovens are a more professional grade oven, so they do a good job, but I just feel like it makes it the best doing that. So those are some quick tips about making um, different breads, uh, more of like a batter style bread instead of a rising bread and, or a yeast bread, I guess, or muffins. Also, I like to turn those too. So yeah, so those are just some tips. I hope they work for you. Hey guys, I just finished up and sliced up my banana bread and that is what it looks like when it's all cooled and sliced up and ready to go. I want that. You want that? Yeah. Oh, someone wants a piece. Want so I think we're gonna try it. That. And that is how you make my vegan banana bread recipe with chocolate chips. I want that.